But I think that now we need to take action. And I believe that women to be need to be in more political leadership position positions and we can world, build this world with our empathy. And this is what men undermine. They undermine the fact that our emotions are so strong, our empathy is so strong. We don't want to feed our egos. We want to feed our humanity. When I know your child is safe, I would be happy. So uh, I'm happy to be receiving this award. And I would like to dedicate it to every woman who has stood up and defended someone in a different continent on another land in another country who could not have said what she wants to say. So I dedicate this award to all those women who carried their phones and took a picture of how a man, uh, an extremist ideologist man mistreated a woman. I dedicate it to the filmmakers, the filmmakers who also uh, have conveyed messages about women and the injustice being done. And I know that this world would be a better place if more women were in power. So thank you very much, Women Voices Now, for this award. And I hope that this is just the start of a lot of work that we will be doing together. Thank you, Adea, so much for those beautiful, powerful words you words you brought so many people into the room with us. Um, we don't often get the opportunity to interface with someone like you. So I have some questions to get to know you more and to, again, to celebrate you for all of your achievements and to give us your insights from where you are positioned in the world. So the first question I have for you is, you've been the first at so many things in your life and you put yourself in a very public role. I would love if you would share with us, what are the struggles or challenges that have come with being the first and has the struggle been worth it? You know, Heidi, in this part of the world, uh, it's it's very difficult to speak about struggles, especially in the Gulf countries. In the Gulf countries, women have been empowered on a very high level. So when we come, when we speak about empowerment, it's I cannot grumble about something that doesn't exist. We are empowered. We are respected. Uh, we are given opportunities. But again, I cannot be happy with what I have when I know that there is another woman in another country not getting what she has. Can you imagine that in the Gulf, in the Arab Gulf countries, can you imagine that Saudi Arabia overnight changed completely, 180 degrees? When I went to Saudi Arabia after the reform, I was shocked. Can you imagine that it's, this was not just about women driving? This was about women rights. It is impressive to me. It's my neighboring country. The moment that they progress, my country pro further progresses too. In the United Arab Emirates, women are leading, taking the leading role in each and every sector. But again, it hurts me that there is another place somewhere else next to me where a girl in love with a boy is having a cup of coffee with him. And then her family murder her and they call it honor killing. I'm happy with the fact that we are empowered. I'm happy with the fact that I can appear now with you, Heidi, and with our guests and speak without having my hijab on. This is something between me and my creator. It's my decision whether to wear it or not. But I'm not happy with the fact that we keep on seeing women being slapped, uh, dragged on the streets, uh, humiliated. I can't take these pictures of my mind. I can't take the picture of the Israeli young woman whose hands were cuffed and she was taken as a hostage. I can't take these things off my mind. I, t I can't take my mind off the mother who cries, of the Palestinian mother who's crying because she has lost her children. But what dragged us to all this? It's these terrorist militias the more powerful they became, they ruined the world. So now it's time for our voices, voices of people who want peace. If we don't speak out, this world is never going to change. We have to accept being bullied, harassed. I'm someone who faced a lot of problems when I was advocating for peace, when I was saying that we need to end 
all the existing problems that we have with each other. We don't have any problems. We're all human beings. How can we, we are different, but different, different doesn't mean that we need to live in a miserable world. So I think the biggest challenge now is not just our voices to be heard. No, our actions also need to be taken. We need to stand by each other. We need to be the voices of the people who are just lost and can't say anything. It breaks my heart. I I hope that, um, especially what we're going through in the Middle East, and soon because of the misery and the tears in the eyes of the mothers just has to stop. And um, it's very sad to see a world where we've allowed these uh, terrorists to rule and to take our children from us. Thank you, Adea. So Women's Voices Now was collecting submissions to its very first film festival in 2010. And at the end of 2010 was the beginning of the Arab uprisings. We're 13, 14 years later. And if we go backwards in time there, it was the first time many of us in the world heard the voices of Arab women unadulterated, right? Like with social media, digital media, we were able to hear what those women were calling for change in their societies, being part of the public square. So now we're more than a decade and a half beyond that. You've definitely spoken to the issues that continue to challenge women in the Arab world, but from the inside, what amongst women and the women's movement in the Arabic speaking world, what, where are the, where's the focus? Where are the efforts? Where, where are people really trying to see and make change today in their own communities? Thank you very much for the question. When I refer to what's happening in Bahrain and in Saudi Arabia and in the United Arab Emirates, I gave examples of countries that have progressed a lot. And we cannot uh, we cannot deny the fact that we we are the we are actually lucky. But the Arab Spring honestly was not Arab Spring. I call it Arab Autumn because it was um, it was some um, extremist uh, groups and militias that were trying to take over the Arab world. And that happened in Egypt when the Muslim Brotherhood took over Egypt. And Hamas that we are fighting against today is Muslim Brotherhood. So when we did not allow the Muslim Brotherhood to continue what they call the Arab Spring, I think that I respect the Egyptian people for fighting against the Muslim Brotherhood being in power. These guys, when they took over Egypt, that is such a beautiful country, changed overnight, completely changed. Um, the Arab, the Arab autumn, as I call it, also was an opportunity. Was also an opportunity for us to open our eyes, who our enemies are. Who are the people who are just raising slogans that make no sense? And in Bahrain, Bahrain suffered from the so-called Arab Spring. We realize that these people who are going out on demonstrations and asking for freedom of expression, they are the same people who harass and bully me when I advocated for peace, when I advocated for the Abraham Accords, when I said that Bahrain, UAE, and Israel made the, one of the best decisions that they normalize and have and agree, peace agreements with each other, the same voices that said that they are the voices of the so-called Arab Spring did not respect freedom of expression. I am actually glad that the so-called Arab Spring failed because in every country that something happened, it backfired. And today, 13 years later, we see the countries who did not allow the so-called Arab Spring to touch them are the countries that survived. Can you imagine that in the Gulf countries, Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, UAE, if that had happened, I wouldn't be sitting here today. I would be under the Iranian rule because that was the whole plan, that Bahrain gets invaded by Iran and the Ayatollah regime, and they do what they're doing to the Iranian people, to people like me with a voice. So it failed, yet it was also an opportunity for us to open our eyes. Thank you, Adea. It's really insightful point of view thank you for sharing so candidly with us so my last question for you is that um women's voices now we strive to be a platform for all women's voices who seek to have their full human potential realized in dignity 
What should we learn and listen to from women in your region of the world? And how can we help to amplify your voices and work together from our different starting points and cultures? Very interesting question, Heidi. Um, support women who advocate for peace. Support them, encourage them, stand by them. 